welcome everyone to the Power Awards Gala, where tonight we will welcome and recognize successful women of different industries and professions. We owe this all to our founder and organizer of the event, Mrs. Tanya DiCosimo, for bringing us all together as one powerful organization. Hi, this is Brooklyn's own Joe Causey from CBS FM 101.1 in New York, and we all hope you have the best time ever tonight with all this great food, great dancing, raffles, even a few surprises and being amongst some very amazing people as well. Congratulations to all our recipients tonight and to each and every one of you for attending. Thanks so much. in the mansion tonight. For those of you who don't know, POWER stands for Professional Organization of Women of Excellence Recognized. Our organization features and highlights celebrities, A-listers, and everyday hard-working women in all industries and professions on a level. As we know, women today are juggling it all. They're working full time, they're caring for their families, they're mentoring other women, and they're also trying to fit in a little alone time. At Power, we try to make women's lives easier by assisting them with networking, branding, and marketing services to help them gain the exposure and recognition they deserve. In addition, we publish our quarterly Power magazine, showcasing celebrities and all of our members. I am thrilled to say that Power has thousands of members, but it also made it hard to decide who was going to receive awards for 2018. My team and I have chosen 15 extraordinary individuals to honor tonight. They proved that with passion, perseverance, and dedication, Anything is possible. A brief profile of each honoree is printed in the program on your table, along with names of other amazing women to know. They should be recognized, and they also could be potential business contacts. As one of my favorite perfume commercials back in the day stated, and now you're gonna know my age, we can bring home the bacon and fry it up in the pan. We are women of power. Now for a lot of thank yous, I have to thank a lot of people tonight. First, I want to thank all the men that are here supporting us women. We couldn't have gotten our back in Thank you, Philomena, Sarah Ann, Marcy, Karen, and Tia Marie for all your support. all about networking and recognition. Thank you, Eva, from Eva's Dresses for my beautiful gown, and for Katrina for doing my makeup. Thank you. Next, I want to thank my employees and my team. There is no I in team, and I couldn't have done this without all of you. Special thanks to Nicole Crumb, Vice President of Power, Chris, my IT director, Cindy Allison, and Sue, who dedicated so much time to this gap. Thank you to my husband, my stepkids, my sister, my brother, my mom, my niece, my nephews, and to my father who's no longer with us, but they all support me in everything that I do. A big thanks to Steve from the mansion and to Gail and Shelley for the beautiful interviews you did tonight. Thank you, Doris Dalton, Marcy Manfredonia, Esther Fortuna, and Elizabeth Sutton for donating to the Swag Bags and the Silent Auction. And a very special thank you to all the honorees, as well as all the women of power in the mansion this evening. Let's raise our glasses.
Let's raise our glasses and toast to all the women in the house tonight. After all, it is ladies' night. to make a difference with Gail. I'm here tonight at the mansion in Oyster Bay. What an incredible evening. And what is it all about? It's about the Power Gala, who's honoring so many incredible women. In fact, in a few minutes, we're going to meet the head of Power Magazine, Tonya DeCosimo. And here is Tonya DeCosimo. Tonya, entrepreneur, you have been a host, you have been interviews, written a book, and now Power Magazine. Yes, indeed, I keep going. <laughs> and tonight is going to be an incredible event. Now let's talk a little bit about Power Magazine. First of all, what does the word power mean to you? The word power to me means helping people, mentoring, influencing people in a positive manner, having integrity and, and being honest. I think uh, some people look at the word power and relate it just to money. It's not all about money. It's about helping others, having integrity, setting goals, and doing the right thing. Now, you have empowered so many people. My question for you tonight is, who has empowered you? Gail, you empower me. <laughs> you know what? It's true. You do. Every woman that I'm honoring tonight actually inspires me and empowers me. Um, I have to tell you, though, I do love Susan Lucci. I've always, she's always been somebody that empowered me. I watched her on daytime soaps. And unfortunately, she can't be here tonight. She's in Italy. But um, she's empowered me, I have to say. My mother empowers me. Really, women in general, and, and men. I mean, we can't just talk about women, but tonight's about women. So, but there's a lot of men that empower me as well. What can we look forward to tonight? What's going to happen? 
Well, we're going to give out 15 awards to women in different industries. And we're also doing a silent auction to benefit Mondays at Racine Cancer Care Foundation. We have a lot of vendors here tonight, raffles. Um, we have people flying in tonight from Texas, Tennessee, California, Iowa, uh, people here from Jersey, Pennsylvania, Long Island. So people are coming from far away to be here to get their award. I have to ask you one last question. You have done so much in your short lifetime thus far, but what do you think will be your legacy? My legacy, I, you know, I have two passions. My one passion is empowering women, and my other passion is helping people find love. I wrote a book called Single and Not Settling, A Journey of Surviving the Dating World. So I want my legacy to be that I've helped people and inspired them. Thank you, that's Tonya DeCosimo. I'm with the beautiful Marcy Manfredonia Siciliano. And if you think that wasn't a mouthful, it was. Hi there. Hi there. Nice to meet you. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Now, you're receiving the Entrepreneur Award. What does that mean to you? It is amazing. Like, from where I came from, I would never think I'd be here today to be able to accept it. It is a beautiful, beautiful honor. Well, let's go back, Marcy, because you said something, and I know that your dad died when you were very young. He had cancer, and we know that tonight's gala is going to benefit a cancer organization called Racines. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I want to ask your opinion and, and thoughts about that. How do you feel about that? I feel really good about that. Um, donating and giving back is very important to me. My mom died from cancer also, and so did my dad. So basically, I've been out um, since I'm 13 years old. So to give back, to help find a cure, is really important to me. Now, you were in a male-dominated field. Yes. Right? Nationwide. Maintenance. And maintenance. Contracting. We do construction and repair work. And basically, um, I started when, you know what, uh, men didn't believe women belong in this field. And it was a very long road, and, but it was well worth it. Well, let me ask you, how did you get started, and what suggestions would you have for other women who'd like to go into a field that's different, that women usually go into? I started actually... Um, well, I had four children, and I knew that I didn't want anybody to control my destiny, and I didn't want to work a nine-to-five job. So really dug down deep in thinking of what I can do, and I knew that I knew maintenance a little bit, so I actually went to a few friends, borrowed a few bucks, and actually made my own destiny for me and my children. And, um, you know, it's step by step, and little by little, and you'll get there with faith of God. How did you know maintenance? I have to tell you, I mean, just hanging a picture for me is major. Well, I guess my dad, I was a tomboy, so I used to work ah. with him and watch things that he did. So at the age of 13, before he passed away, I was one of those little tomboys with a baseball cap and followed my father around everywhere. And look at you now. And also a feminine side with the candles. Yes. Talk a little bit about that, please. So um, I wanted to do something else, and I was doing the gala for American Cancer Society, and my son was messing around making candles, and I thought, wow, that's a great idea. Let's make this centerpieces for the gala. And it just turned out such a uh, rapport of people loving it, and that's how Custom Candle came. This is amazing. I want to thank you so much, thank and you. thank you that you brought a gift tonight for the silent auction. You look absolutely stunning, and it's a pleasure. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. I appreciate this. Thank you. I'm here with the stunning and erudite Regina Calcitera. I love this lady. I haven't seen her in a few years. How are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. Oh. And so, so is my book, and, and um, with you know, I've been traveling a lot on it. It came out, Hatch and Sand, which is my memoir growing up on Long Island, in and out of foster Absolutely. homes and, and um, homeless shelters with my siblings, came out about six years ago, and since then has become a New York Times bestseller and a number one international bestseller, and has actually been incorporated into high school and college oh, curriculum nice. nationwide mm -hmm. because of all the different messages that are in the book about you know resil children and resilience and perseverance. Yeah, I have a question for you, Regina. And it's something that has so disturbed me. But when children age out, what can we do to help them from foster care? 
Well, they, every child needs an adult connection. There are over 400,000 children in the foster care system every single year, and at least 21,000 of them age out at ages 18 or 21. And what that means is that when their foster parents don't get paid money for them anymore, many parents don't keep them in the home. There are some that do, but some that don't. So then they're basically on their own, and unfortunately, a lot of them end up, end up homeless or incarcerated without an adult connection. And in fact, half of the homeless population in the U.S. are former foster kids, and a third of the incarcerated or former foster kids because we put our youth out on the street with very little resources out there and and they have to make poor choices in order to survive but if they aged out with an adult connection whether it was a parent or someone that they know that's an adult that makes a commitment to them to be a forever parent or to just be their adult connection that they could always go to and have a safety net that makes a huge difference in the life of a youth aging out of foster care I also know that you had worked on a book with Rosie. Rosie's your youngest sister. Tell us a little bit about that, what's going on with that. Um, Girl and Broken came out about two years ago, and that was also published by HarperCollins. And I wrote that with my sister, Rosie Maloney. And um, the reason why there was such an interest in writing her story is because in, in my book, I share with the readers that I was separated and put into a different foster home than my younger siblings who I was raising. Mm -hmm. And um, my mother went to that foster home and kidnapped them and brought them all the way to Idaho. So, so everyone wanted to know what happened to Rosie. Mm -hmm. So that prompted us writing her story as well, which for me was the greatest gift to give her the ability to share her story and to remind her every day how resilient she truly is. So she embraced mm -hmm. becoming an author and she has embraced for the past few years sharing her messages of, of, of resilience and tenacity and overcoming you know, various types of abuse as well with others. You can see why Regina Calcaterra won the Advocate Award. You're also an attorney, and you have done so much good for Long Island. I'm thinking of Superstorm Sandy and all the other things that you've done. Now, many times we are empowered by the people that we work for, that we write about. How has your book empowered you? It's, it's empowered me and given me a platform to actually advocate for foster children. Where before I didn't ha before I, ha I actually wrote the book, I didn't have a platform to do that. Now it gives me an opportunity to travel nationally and write and share my story and the stories of other foster youth, na youth nationally. And as a result of that platform to advocate for foster children, I get, I'm constantly getting emails and photographs of adults who have went out and adopted older foster children, have adopted sibling groups, and um, people to, who are do, stepping up and volunteering to be mentors or be the voice of foster children. So the, by, sh by sharing my story, it's actually empowered me to be an advocate for foster children, which is something that I've always wanted to be. I'd like to close by asking you, what have you learned about yourself through all of this? How lucky I am and how blessed I am to have had the opportunity to survive my childhood and be able to share it with others in a way that is motivating and inspiring. And I have to say, on that note, I want to thank you because we also are blessed by you and all that you do. Thank you, Regina. And thank you, Gail. Hi, I'm with Esther Fortunoff, and Esther is the president and owner of the fine jewelry from Fortunoff. Hi. Hi, how are you? You know what? I'm doing great. You hear the name Fortunoff, and of course that connotes so much success, so many wonderful products. And when I told my mom I'm going to be interviewing you, she said, I love the jewelry from there. Our jewelry is wonderful. And in my new store, I have the same quality, a lot of the same classic items, although a lot of new trendy items as well. But I'm sure that anyone in your family would find something great. I'm sure of that. Now, in 2010, you were online, and then 2014. Tell us a little bit about that transition. Right. So after the store had been closed, we reopened just online, did that for a while, and our customers just said, we really want to try on the jewelry. It's much easier to know how an earring looks when it's on. And so I decided to find the right place to reopen, and it was in Westbury where we began in Westbury in 1964. 
And I so agree with you. You know, to actually look at it, have somebody speaking with you, right. that's the touch. And I think that's one of the reasons why you're so successful. Now, I know it's third generation, yeah. and I have to say, we all know of all the advantages working with family. But I'm going to ask you, is it ever difficult working with family? And if it is, what advice would you give somebody who's also attempting to go into a field with their family? It's definitely fun, but it's often difficult to work with family members. I would say it's great if you have enough different types of responsibilities so that everyone can have their own area and have a little bit of control over something instead of everyone sort of, you know, having an opinion about the same thing. It's great if there can be, you know, true roles assigned. This from a woman who was Retailer of the Year and Retailer in the Hall of Fame. Esther Fortunoff, I want to thank you so much and congratulations on your award. Thank you. It's a pleasure. I'm here with Dr. Doris Dalton from Dalton Beauty. What thank an you. honor. Thank you. It's my honor. Thank you so much for having me. She's gorgeous. I'm She's looking at her skin. Kind. I'm looking at her skin. It's good makeup. <laughs> That's it exactly is. exactly what it is. No, 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 no. And you were a Mrs. America in yes. 1992. That's correct. You're doing your homework, Gail. Oh, wow. yeah. All right. I love the fact that you combined medical background, I know you're a chiropractor, mm -hmm. with beauty, That's but right. there's also an underlying story. Sometimes we say, you know, the necessity... Right, we have to do yes. things because lemons and lemonade, right? Go for it. Out of the necessity, what is it? Out, what is that saying? What is that adage? Oh, out of goodness. something, necessity um, comes. I, I forgot forget. you. I forget. Gail, it doesn't but that's matter all right. because we're going to explain it that's right it. now. Yeah. It's the mother of invention. That's right. Oh, out of, that's right. Necessity is the mother of invention. So yes, I'm a cancer survivor. So I'm so honored, really, to be here at this event. Um, about 10 years ago, I suffered from a very rare form of cancer, and I lost all my eyebrows, and my skin was ravished. So quite honestly, and I was someone like you. I was in the cameras, and I was in front of the public eye, and I didn't recognize myself. I was like, who is that girl? So I just started creating products because I was actually helping to formulate products for some of the biggest companies in the world, and I just started creating products really for myself. It was really never my intent or actually even my desire to have a makeup brand and um, people just said like you you have beautiful skin and I really don't I have very ravished skin I have very red skin very irritated skin. I don't see it you don't see it that's right because I don't want you to see it they're those pesky things that I wanted to create solutions for and um, that was 10 years ago so now it's so well received and it's helping women in so many different ways whether there's someone that's a cancer survivor like myself or someone that just, you know, wants to feel better. And I never met a woman in my life that didn't want to feel pretty, right? Absolutely. Every woman wants to feel pretty. Now you've been on Q uh, QVC. That's right. Well, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. There are people out there, there are women entrepreneurs, sure. and you're being celebrated tonight, the Power Beauty Award. Right. So how can they get started? They have a product, and they want to get it on QVC. Now's the time to ask. Now's the time to ask. Okay. Um, I, I, I say there's a, there's a lot of different ways to get started, but first of all, I mean, to get really to the grassroots of it, I think the most important thing that you have to have is passion because no one can give you that but yourself, right? So if you have a passion for something, um, then it kind of all falls into place. And secondly, I would say courage <laughs> because a lot of times it takes a lot of courage to put yourself out there and hear no or to hear, well, you're not original, right? So um, passion and courage are two of the very important things, I think, and that will take you really far, whether it's on QVC or wherever it is that maybe it's a salon or a boutique or a service or whatever it is that you're looking to do. And then I always say my third thing, and I just know does not, it's not my vocabulary. I will not take no for an answer. I love that. <laughs> I mean, I just won't. It doesn't, um, it just doesn't exist in my you vocabulary. You know, I have found very successful women always are kind and caring about others. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention your love of animals and how you help them. Yeah, um, every time I talk, it brings tears to my eyes when I talk about it. But um, 
Yeah, we started uh, Dolls for Paws, and um, we feature homeless animals on all of our social sites, and we had the largest adoption um, event ever in the Women's Humane Society's um, you know, events, so it's been something that's near and dear to my heart. I grew up on a farm, so animals really aren't, um, I, I don't know, they're just so near and dear to my heart, and they don't have a voice, and I figure I have a pretty big, big voice, you know? So I wanted to make sure that they're heard, and um, that they get the home, and they get the love that they deserve. Thank you so Thanks, much, Thank Dr. So Doris much. Dalton. Thank you. The Travel and Tourism Award goes to Joanne Caputo Trippi. <laughs> Hi. Thank Hi. Thank you, Gail. Oh, it's so nice to finally meet you. And I see the word and the name Caputo. That's my cousin, Larry. I interviewed Larry a couple of years ago. And you know, tonight we're honoring Racine's, the Cancer Care Foundation. And he was just so wonderful and open and talking about his mom. Yes, my Aunt Connie. So, there isn't anybody who hasn't been affected knowing someone involved having had cancer, right. correct? Correct. So what does this mean to you tonight? Um, just honoring everybody that's been survivors, and we're all here to pray for them and help them. Now I want to talk a little bit about you, because you received awards as well. Delta Airlines, tell us about that. I was the um, number one producer for 2018 um, in my company. It's fabulous. Over yeah. 30 Delta years. Vacation. Yes. Pro yes. travel, yes. right? We, yep. we want to get that out there. Pro travel International. We have 23 locations in the U.S. and Europe. And um, I work in the Westbury office, which is brand new. And uh, I work with a lot of great people. What made you get started? Was it the whole idea of travel? I've been doing it my whole life. I just enjoy really? traveling, and I like making people happy, and I just love it. There are quite a few people who are involved in it now. Yes. Why are you successful? What were the elements that caused you to become that successful? And she is. And one of the things is that the company I'm with is very large, and we have so many um, cruise companies and hoteliers that come to us every week. They want our business. They give us above and beyond to give our agents. We're part of Virtuoso, which means we get, get our clients upgrades and breakfasts and all. So all kinds you of... You can't get, yes. So you go above, yes. and above and beyond. And that seems to be the secret of yes. so many of our honorees tonight. Yes. One last question. Tell me, please, about river cruising. River cruising is off the charts right now. It is the ships, they are building them more beautiful and more spacious than the other. It's nice and small, which I like. You're going down the locks and um, yeah, it's great. Thank you so much, Joanne. Oh, it was a pleasure. Congratulations on your you. award. And I'll see you inside. Okay. It's always a party when you're with Racines. I love, love, love these ladies, but I'd like them to tell you a little bit about the background. We know they're the honorees for tonight, and we know some of the great things they do, but let's talk a little bit first about your inspiration, how it got started. So, Carla? <laughs> Basically, um, we started this foundation in homage to our mother, who went through a difficult battle in the 80s, and she lost that battle. And a few years later, we found ourselves with a salon, and we were able to open up our doors one day a month to help our community folks. And that grew and grew and grew. And right now, we have 16 salons across Long Island doing this program. I have to ask you, the 16 salons, are you doing 16 different things? So 16, it's just not, you know, when you start off something, you don't know how it's going to develop. And what turned into be salon and spa services is now 16 salons, spas, yoga studios, wellness centers, inclusive of acupuncture, Reiki, amazing um, services encompassing all wellness to balance the ravages of chemotherapy and radiation. These 16 um, facilities have taken on our program 
from our, you know, being tutored by us and educated by us, and now we're growing and growing and growing, Gail. We just, this is really our mission now, is just spread this out so Beautiful. more people are being serviced. Now, which sister are we missing? We're, we're missing, missing Cynthia Sansone, and we're missing Rosemary Berger, who is right. our... Our medical esthetician and educator for the entire program. And I practiced saying Rachel D. Malfetto. You have no you idea because I practiced it. Yes, now, thank you, Gail. Oh, please. But I, I want to get back to this because you have the beauty ball. It's a yeah. tremendous, a tremendous honor to be invited to it, to interview at it, and to just attend it. So tell a little bit about that. Well, we're always happy to have you and Shelly at the Long Island Beauty Ball. This year it's on October 28th at the Crest Hollow, and it's our fifth anniversary. So this year is going to be amazing. So please get your tickets, Mondays at Racine.org. Some 8,000 women and men have been helped. I think it's even more than that now. Uh, we're probably hovering in the 9,000 patients that we have taken care of. And I, I'm, I'm honestly, I, I was thinking about when I'm speaking up tonight, and I'll just give you a sneak peek, is that I real, feel very strongly, especially of late, that we are taking this honor, and it's fitting because it's called the Power Awards, to give the power back to these people that we've serviced. But I am, we are receiving this honor for all of the patients that lost their battle. Uh, sometimes, and, and you know, no, there's no accidents, we become very intimate and close to a lot of these patients, so it is almost like we're losing family members. But on the flip side of that, not to be so bleak, there's so many people that graduate from our program, we ring bells when they graduate, I and saw that the other day on Facebook. They, and they go on and um, we know that we've touched their lives in such a way that helped them really humanize what they went through. So the nonprofit started? In 2003. <laughs> I was going to help you there, Carl. <laughs> Thanks, Gal. 2003, the charity began, and in 2013, we became a formal 501c3. So tonight... As a nonprofit award, congratulations, and also selected for the silent auction. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm super excited and so grateful to Tonya and to everybody. Right, definitely. And is George Clooney being au auctioned off? I didn't hear that. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> okay, sorry, Shelly. Oh, Shelly. Oh, Shelly. Oh, Shelly. oh, well, that's almost as good, right? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm in big yeah, trouble. I can't. Gail, hands <laughs> But I want to thank, thank you, Gail, because you're always so supportive thank of you. everything. You we do. love we, you. We love you, too. Thank you so much. And you're gorgeous. I got both of our... I'm here with Dr. Allison Myers from North Shore University Hospital. Hello. Hi, how are you today? I'm doing great, and I'm so excited about tonight. You're getting the top medical doctor award. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That is just amazing. Now tell me, you're a medical director, and from what I remember, uh, had to do with diabetes and inpatients. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Tell right. me that. So I'm the medical director for inpatient diabetes at North Shore University Hospital. It's a quaternary care hospital located in Manhasset here in Long Island. And um, we know that about 30% of patients hospitalized at a given time have diabetes, and making sure that their blood sugars are well controlled is of the utmost importance. Mm -hmm. So they need me as the medical director of inpatient diabetes to oversee the quality initiatives to make sure that we're providing the best of diabetes care to our patients while they're in the hospital. What three things should somebody look for if they suspect that they do have diabetes? Well, that's a good question because the problem with diabetes is that most people won't develop the signs or symptoms of diabetes for a good five to seven years. So honestly, the best thing to do is just to get screened, especially if you're high risk. That would be if you're of certain ethnicities, African American, Latino, Asian, Native American, if you're overweight, if you are a woman who had uh, diabetes in pregnancy, which we call gestational diabetes, uh, those are some of the risk factors that you would look for. So so unfortunately, until years have gone by, most people won't have the symptoms of it. But some of the signs and symptoms can be excessive fatigue, excessive thirst, mm -hmm. having to urinate frequently, numbness or tingling in the hands or feet. Well, you got a whole group there. So if you are worried about that, mm -hmm. it's better to take the test and find out, correct? Right, absolutely.
Now, you received the Michael Kors Award. That was amazing. Tell a little bit about that, because I think that's quite an honor in addition to your award tonight. Right. So one of my other hats is I'm also a researcher, so I'm affiliated with the Feinstein Institute, which is also a part of Northwell Health, and I received that award last year, um, so it was able to support me to be able to go to the Academy Health Conference so I could learn more about research. And do you study depression at all? Did I, did I read that? So yeah. my initial training in residency, I did a combined oh, training okay. in internal medicine and psychiatry. So in the past, I have done some research looking at the connection between depression and diabetes. There's some women questions. Okay. How do women empower other women? I think one of the things that is the most empowering is to give back. I was talking to one of the doctors here today, and I told her that I love meeting the older doctors because they were such trailblazers. I mean, nowadays, 50% of medical schools are women, but I know when I was in med school and some of the other ladies who came way before me, it was much less. So I think it's talking to other women who are going through similar things and continuing to encourage so that the next generation will feel just empowered. That's excellent. I want to thank you so much, and congratulations on your award. And what's next for you? Well, I just got a promotion to associate professor, so that was a pretty big Congratulations. Thing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank you. Meyer. I appreciate Pleasure. it. Thank you. Good night. All right. Just, just take one look at her. It's Erin Opria. And we know many of her celebrity trainer to the stars. But this amazing woman has an incredible background. I'm very impressed. Well, thank you. Let me share a little bit why, and then we can talk about it. You were one of the first females to go into combat. You did two tours in Iraq. God bless you for that. Thank you, thank you. So I was one of the first females to lead an all-female platoon in a war zone, which is pretty cool. Um, it's changed the presence for women, which is amazing. That's oh, awesome. And thank you for the service that you, you have done. Right, well, let's talk about this. You are a single parent. You cleaned houses. You did a lot of work to get to where you are. But you ended up now training so many different people, including Carrie Underwood, Kelsey Ballerina, right? Yes. And I know you're not impressed because they are celebrities, they're like everybody else, but truly that is incredible to go from that position, single mom, cleaning houses, to suddenly finding yourself. How did that happen? As a woman, what advice would you give? You know what? I feel like it's 100% hard work, persistence, and never giving up. I mean, it's like this. It's a roller coaster ride. There's highs, there's lows, and on the lows to stay committed to what you really want in life and to follow your passion don't follow money that is 100 i love true. that is if you follow your passion it will show if you follow money people will know and of course you have that would you say brochure four by four by four let's talk a little bit about that i mean my book the four by four diet is truly how i live my life every day it's how i teach my clients to do the same thing it's a lifestyle it's simple it's easy to follow it's something everybody can do it means just about learning how to live a healthy, balanced lifestyle forever. Not a quick fix. Um, slow and steady. I always say the weight didn't come on overnight. It shouldn't come off overnight. It's but let's mention what the 4x4x4 four by four by four would be. So the 4x4 four four diet is four simple rules of nutrition and four-minute workouts, which are Tabatas. They're all my favorite style of training. In four weeks, you'll look like this. Yeah, there you, four weeks. That's it. But no, Tabata workouts are the best. I love to turn fitness into a game and having fun, and that's what oh. the book is all about. And you're receiving the award, I'm sorry, for health. And I think that is what it's about, to have good health and Absolutely. fitness. Absolutely. It's not about looks. I always say what on the, what's on the inside really matters. How you feel is a key. I mean, being skinny, if you're skinny and don't feel good, that doesn't matter. It's all about how you feel. Absolutely. Does everyone do the same thing? Now... I'm a little bit underweight, but quite honestly, do, does everybody do the same thing? They meet you and they do. <laughs> That's pretty funny, but yes, yeah, so people are like, don't look, don't look, I'm really not eating that. I'm like, look, I'm not judging. I mean, I have bad meals too, donuts. <laughs> So, I was going to entice you with a donut. I love donuts, but I do try to limit it to like, not very often. We try to save it as a travel food. And how do you see women empowering other women? Sorry, we said. How do you see other women empowering other women? Oh my gosh, it's so great to see a community of women trying to build each other up. Because that's, I feel like a huge problem is women love to put other women down. I feel like if we were all each other's cheerleader, this world would be a better place. Oh, I love that. No sense in competing. Oh. There's so much room for all of There's us. There's so grow. much for everybody. Yes, and we keep absolutely, saying that. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, that is terrific. Erin, I think you're going to become one of my favorite people. Oh, you're sweet. No, thank you. 
But anyway, pleasure meeting you. I look forward to seeing you. And I'll bet you she's going to bust a move on that dance floor. Well, of course. We're going to have some fun tonight, right? <laughs> Thank you. Hey, thanks pleasure. for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. This prominent doctor is Dr. Leona Ayers, and you're receiving the Medical and Scientific Research Award. Correct. Congratulations. Thank you. And very impressive background. I know you've done a lot of work, cancer, HIV, and you've gone into other countries for this. I was very fortunate to be able to have uh, national cancer uh, funding to have a program in Sub-Saharan Africa. We had the Sub-Saharan Africa Lymphoma Consortium, and I had projects in uh, East Africa and mm -hmm. Kenya and Uganda, South Africa, both East and West, and in uh, Nigeria. You have made some 250 speeches. Would you please share, 45 seconds or less, the gist of one of your speeches, where we're going? Well, uh, this is a very, uh, science is always interesting, and this is an interesting time in science and cancer. Uh, there's the proliferation of the opportunity, anyway, of new treatments that specifically target cancer, and that's part of our research, is looking for what are called biomarkers. And this defines a protein to which an antibody can be made, and it has resulted in the extension of life in patients who have very serious cancers. So this is a very optimistic period of time. Well, that's, that's it's wonderful. An opportunity. Absolutely. I understand from a quote that you once said, people are so very interesting. What's interesting about you that we don't know? <laughs> you know nothing about me. <laughs> I, um, I don't know how interesting people find me. Some of my employees find me more formidable than interesting sometimes. And how do you feel about that? I, I like that. You like that. But you did make the quote. <laughs> People are always very I interested. Of any subject matter that maintains its interest over time better than people. People are forever interesting. E did you know that each person is a one of a kind? Yes. That there is no other yes. thing on earth that is the same as that person. So and isn't each it, person is an individual. And isn't it amazing how we have certain genes and nobody looks exactly the same? Well, of course they don't, because nobody is the same. Well, except for identical twins, twins. I was just that, going to... that come about as close. But even well, they, even they downstream, have some differences. They have some differences. Now, you've written some 14 chapters in books. Go ahead. Oh yes, I, I have. Um, one of the nice things about having large programs mm -hmm. and having collaborators for those programs is uh, to watch your collaborators do well. So some of my collaborators have written things with me, book chapters, papers, and whatever. And I've had the pleasure of watching some of those individuals go on to do very well in their field. For instance, one of my collaborators recently became the chair of the Department of Pathology in the um, South African National Health um, organization in in Johannesburg okay. at the Wits Waters Ran and she that's the first time a woman has occupied a position of that that's elevation. Amazing. So I'm very pleased yeah. for Dr. So Pern and Dr. Uh, Yvonne Perna who's done very well and one of my other colleagues women I'm just talking about women now men Well have this well is what too. we're doing tonight in the power Right? The gala, right. we're honoring the women. The other woman who's done very well, who's recently become a, um, also a chair of a department, is uh, Dr. Lynette uh, Kanakunda. And name. she was, uh, she was actually chair in, in um, McCary University mm -hmm. in Kampala, Uganda. Mm -hmm. And she has now become chair uh, of, a, of a larger department. So. so so we've seen so many changes from the time probably that you started medical school. We know, of course, you're also a professor and a pathologist. But what changes do we still have to see? Oh, there's forever a frontier. Give us a they're, couple. They're forever unknowns. Well, for instance, I just published a paper in October of last year 
demonstrating that mast cells, long-lived cells in humans, are very important in the formation of the Kaposi sarcoma lesion. And this opened the door to treat that particular lesion with very benign drugs. Really? Such That's as a major advance. Vitamin C and antihistamines. So that's sort of a remarkable breakthrough. It's amazing. amazing. To the sense you wouldn't think that something like that would just now be no. being discovered. And I'm now working on the, the prospect that Kaposi sarcoma rises in the bone marrow, right. is distributed to the periphery, and these mast cells are able to, to make like an incubator for them to start their growth in the skin and other Fascinating. It is fascinating. Thank you so much. A final word? I think I, you were going to say something? Well, the wonderful thing about science is there's always more to come. Exactly. And I think that you're going to help us in that field. Thank you, Dr. Harris. Thank a you. pleasure. I'm here with the beautiful Leslie O'Hare, Leslie O'Hare Media, who's incredible. Now, you do so many things from uh, off-Broadway producer, director, you have a magazine, you've written a book, you talk about faith, transformation, but what have I left out? <laughs> I don't think I get any sleep, actually. Yes, I, um, I'm also a TEDx speaker, and uh, one of my biggest things to talk about as a TEDx speaker and public speaker, I believe in encouraging women to live life. I actually just launched and released my brand new book, 30 Days of Living Life, Spirit and Soul Journal for Women, and really getting women to understand that no matter what we go through in life, it's really about waking up every single day and being the best version of yourself. So we can change your destiny if something is happened to us and I know in your past there were some dilemmas yes. we can overcome them take charge and change the direction of a life yes yes we can and it really starts with our mind is how we think about ourselves first and for me it's my faith and really believing in being everything that God created me to be and if I can allow that that the information that I've learned and the experiences that I've gone through to empower other women to see the same thing. I think the sky's the limit and we can be just anything we want to be as strong women. How did you get to that path? Because there's going to be somebody watching this who's going to say, that's great, but she doesn't know what I'm going through. You know, at a very young age, at 14 years of age, I was sharing this with Tanya, even in an article that she did with me on in Power Magazine. I met my dad for the first time. I asked, could I keep in contact with him? And he said, no. So at 14, meeting my dad for the first time, telling me that his three sons that he had with his previous wife is more important to him than me. That was the first experience of rejection. And then going through divorce at almost 50 years of age just recently. So going through that and so many other hurtful things in my life and trials and tribulations, it made me stronger. It built my faith in God. It allowed me to know to take those experiences, utilize it as hurdles exactly. to jump over to my destiny. And you know what's amazing? Once you overcome the first obstacle, you get some confidence. Yes. Then you go to the second one. Yes. And it's, I think we're given these obstacles, I could be wrong, but for a reason. We are. I, I do believe that. And to share with others, as tonight you're receiving an award. I am. I'm and you're so sharing excited. so much yes. of your life with other people and yes. affecting them. And I have to say that that's a beautiful thing. Thank you so much. It's so exciting. I'm really thankful to Tanya to honor me with this award this evening and to be able to utilize my life story and experiences. And you're absolutely right. I think that every trial and tribulation that we go through is not for ourselves. It's really so that we can look back, reach down, and help another woman to say, you know what? I know what you're going through. Mm -hmm. My story may be different, but we all have we a story. But you know what? I've gone through something. I can help you get through yours if you just hang on to my hand, let me lift you up, right, right. and let's stand stronger together. Because divided, we fall, we fall apart. apart. We fall apart. But That's together, so we're true. united, we stand stronger, and we persevere. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I think we have to stop saying, why me? Say, why not me? Why not me? And why can't I help others? Yes, yeah. And I've oh, been there before. I think we agree. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. What a thank, thank you. It's a nice much. meeting you as Terrific. well. Thank, thank you so much. Lovely lady next to me is Elizabeth Sutton, who is an artist from Manhattan. Welcome. 
Hi, thank you so much for having me. What an honor it is to be here. Oh, this is a pleasure. What a great event. And of course, you get Uprising Star. Well, today is actually an amazing day. I have officially received two major awards today. Um, I, on my way here, uh, got an announcement that I, my tile received best in show at the HG Expo on top of this rising star honor tonight. So I'm very happy. Oh, Elizabeth, congratulations. You're having quite a year. Now, I think I remember you from Bravo TV. Um, I yeah. was on Million Dollar Million List. Million Dollar, yeah, it's a Bravo, yes. Bravo show. A few times I was yeah. working with uh, Ryan Sterhant for a Million Dollar right. Listing, which is one of the things that made me say, okay, I'm going to proceed with my art. Really? But um, I have worked with a number of celebrities, but I work with private clients, I paint, I have prints, I do clutches, I work with all types of people equally important to me. How did you get involved in art? And, and I know you probably were so artistic as a child, but how did you get into it? Who inspired you? I was not artistic oh. as a child. No. Self-taught, actually. I picked up a paintbrush three and a half years ago for the first time ever. Um, I went through a number of shifts and transitions in my life, including a number of losses, and uh, I needed to start working, and I thought I was going to become a chef. My creative outlet back then You're so was... creative, though, anyway. You, that's the creative side of the brain. Yes, I, I, I have a number of creative outlets, but it used to be cooking and tablescaping, and... Uh, by the fate of the stars, I don't even know how I became an artist, but thank God, because it saved my life. I love my art. It's my happy place. Well, and the reason I mention the show is because I am a fan of that show. I had seen your work, and I love the fact that they're, they're uplifting. And some of your works, now you've done Marilyn Monroe, you have done uh, Exotic Animals. I love that. So it's not just there, it's something that makes you appreciate it, feel good. And I think that may be why that helps sell those houses. Well, I like to describe my art as happy art. Um, my art is all about energy, you know. My career started, honestly, from a really sad and bad place. And so my goal in, in life with my art is to actually inspire positivity and perspective and, you know, to teach people that you can go through very hard times, but you need to build resilience and learn coping mechanisms and, you know, kind of a uh, rainbow at the end of the storm. You know, like my tagline in my work is, life is not always rainbows and butterflies, but my art is. So I like my art to bring good vibes into the home, um, beauty, energy, and, you know, positivity. You can get through any storm. Honestly, the world kind of saw my life crumble on social media. I'm not going to get into how, but I lost... Um, a, a very dear friend and assistant in a tragic car accident on my birthday a little over a year ago. And uh, instead of, you know, breaking down, I tried to channel all that negativity into getting stronger. You'd be amazed out of adversity how many wonderful things come about and how inspired other people can become based on what people go through when they do encounter adversity and how we grow from it. And then to take that and expand it into your passion, your art, is amazing. I want to congratulate you for the award tonight. Thank and I'm you. so Thank glad you, you made it. I, I'm glad to be here. I need a cocktail. Are you having one with me? I need a couple, maybe. Of course. A couple. Thank you, Danielle. Oh, too good. Oh. I'm here with Linda Feraldo. Linda, it is a pleasure to see you tonight, and I'm excited for you because you're receiving the award for? Real estate agent. Oh, that is great. You know, I'm... Cut that. Okay. Okay. I don't know what they're giving me the award for, to be honest with you. Oh, okay. But uh, real estate, be. realtor award. So it is real estate. And if you say real estate, it's fine instead of realtor? Real, okay. I'm a realtor. I, I honey, honey, say, I, no, no, okay. Stop, 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 stop. she can do it. To say so, I know, to I know, it's okay. Do it one more time. No, no, we got it, I got we it. We got it, we got it, we're yeah. good. No, 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 okay. Okay, I'm here with Linda Feraldo, who's receiving the Realtor Award tonight from Power Magazine. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Oh. It's, uh, this has got to be an honor for you with all 
people who are involved in that, and you got the award. It is an honor, and I appreciate it very much. I'm so excited for you, and can't wait to see you up there getting it. But tell me, how did you get started in that field? Actually, I was in between careers, and being that I was always in retail and management and loved working with people, and I grew up on the North Shore, and I love living here, I love homes, I love everything about real estate, I decided to give real estate a try. And it just was the perfect match for me. It was like I found my calling, and I've been a top producer ever since. That's beautiful, and I'm hearing tonight all of the women who are so successful like yourself have this passion for their career. I want to thank you so much, and I'm going to see you inside. Great, thank you. Thank you, Linda.